I'm Matt. I'm Zach. And this is The Anatomy Of. On this podcast, we listen to prog metal and rock songs. Usually. And break it down. Hey guys, welcome to the podcast this week. I'm Zach, Matt's here with me. Uh, we're going to be going over Cloud Kicker this week. Cloud Kicker's kind of cool. It's uh, one guy that's in Ohio, I think like Columbus, maybe. His name is Ben Sharp. He does all of this music by himself as a hobby. He's actually like a commercial airline pilot, I think. And he just wanted to make music and he makes the music and... He did it for free for a while, but people wanted to donate to him. So he like made a band camp and made it available to download. If you wanted to donate, you can donate and you can also just put zero and download it for free. So you should check out that if you dig the songs that we're going to go over. But don't do zero and be a jerk person. Donate to the artist, you sons of bitches. I mean, you can. He really, he really was like against getting donations for the longest time. He's like the best dude. He he didn't like touring, so he just wanted to make music. But in like 2014, I think he did a small tour with the band Intronaut, which you may have heard of. Uh, they played basically as his backing band, and they toured. And I went with some friends to Philadelphia to see him in this small club. I forgot what it was called. And it was awesome. It was just totally fucking amazing. Totally lived up to the hype. Me and my friends like love this guy. My friend Dave showed him to me. Um, Dave's a big fan. His his girlfriend at the time actually got him some some signed merch from him because she wrote him a letter because he's just a guy. He's not like famous or anything, you know. And he sent over some cool like uh, vinyl pressings of some older albums and stuff like that. Um, I remember I went to the bathroom at the show and this guy was like, oh, I didn't even know there was a concert tonight. And I was like, I drove five hours to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I met I met Ben briefly after the show and I was like, all right, be cool, be cool. And I was like, hey, man, I just wanted to say that that was magical. <laughs> I fucking told him it was magical. <laughs> and then sparkles came out of your eyes and <laughs> you wept a little bit in front of him. Right, right, right. It's just, it's cool because it's not, the he's not really overly technical at all, but it's just all about the vibes to go back to our Gen Z terms. Um, oh God, no, not vibes again. We can't use that word. Yeah, man, you got to vibe with it. It's just cool. It's just cool vibes. It's like heavy, but not like stupid and it's just a really good time. So I've got questions before we even start the episode. Yeah. I'm that guy. That's what we're here for. Between you and me and the listeners aren't going to really know a ton about this. But you remember that show that we went to at that tiny little venue around the corner from the barbecue place? That wasn't Intronaut, was it? Like what band was it that was playing Tiny there? venue around the corner from the barbecue place. Yes. So for those of you that don't know, we live in Rochester, New York. Zach and I, in the times before Corona, have liked to go to concerts together. Um, and we saw a band that Zach had hyped up because he had heard about them, I believe, on one of those Bandcamp-like services. It was off of, like, if you go down um, Culver near East High, and you, there's, there's, there was a brewery over there. And then there was like this tiny little club where we saw a concert. Shane went. Oh, oh, that was. Um, yeah, that was Astronoid. Astronoid. And this is Intronaut. OK, so I'm I'm OK with being confused between those. Yeah. Intro. Well, this is this is Cloud Kicker, but Intronaut was the band that played with him on the tour. Yeah. Right. I know. I was asking. I wasn't asking if we saw Cloud Kicker at the time. I, I was you. asking if we saw Intronaut. Yeah, it was Astronoid who was who was actually touring with Tesseract, who was actually on the Cloud Kicker tour, coincidentally enough, as well. Their singer was sick, so they played an instrumental show the night I saw them uh, in Tesseract. But uh, Asteroid basically on the off nights with, I think it was actually Animals as Leaders, Tesseract, and Asteroid. And then on the off nights from Animals as Leaders, Tesseract and Asteroid would play shows. And then on those off nights, Astronaut would headline their own shows at smaller places like along the way absolutely insane 
So we saw Asteroid and uh, I think a couple locals open for them. They were a cool band. That was a good time. It was an interesting show. Um, there was like yeah, four of it, us. <laughs> right. It was us and literally three other people. Like we're not even <laughs> yeah. exaggerating here. I felt so bad for those dudes. Like they stopped playing and I was just like, thanks for playing guys. I know it's not a lot, but we appreciated it. And they were like, you're trying really guys. hard. <laughs> <laughs> he liked your kill switch shirt, right? Oh, he might've commented on my kill switch shirt. Sure. Yeah. You got, you got anything else you want me or these listeners to know about before we start listening to, to cloud kicker. Only if you have any more uh, questions. Not currently, but I'm sure I will have some. So let's get this rolling. All right, listeners, I want you to go on a journey with me. Matt is sitting here at his desk. And he was just doing a little head bop during the beginning of that song because it was just fun and delightful and a nice little guitar rift. Riff, not rift. Good Lord. I enjoyed it. I'm going to hit play now. I think I know the answer to this question. Is he is he laying down all these instruments? Yep, he does it all on his computer, uh, to my knowledge. And uh, yeah, and it's instrumental. And I think I didn't even say the name of the song. This is called Amy, I Love You off of his Beacons album, which I think is, is either his first or second uh, full release. Are they like LPs or are they EPs? I don't really know the difference. I just know EPs are usually shorter. I, I mean, it seems like a full enough album. I think they're normally yeah. like 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. Um, I had another question. Oh, so you said he does it all on his computer. Is he is he programming sounds or is he playing instruments into the computer? I believe he programs the drums and plays the guitars, uh, but I don't really know. That's just what I assume, I guess. That's my own speculation. Okay. I guess I don't really know how he records it at all. That's just what I presumed based on other friends I have who have their own solo projects that do everything themselves. So you are sitting here bullshitting me with zero knowledge. That's what you're doing. Well, yeah. I mean, I just assumed that because he's a pilot and doesn't do this professionally that he doesn't, he probably has like a cool studio set up in his house. Cause I'm sure pilots make pretty good money, but I'm sure he doesn't have like a full on professional million dollar studio. Like, it's not Dr. Dre sitting in there. What do you think his studio looks like, Zach? With a giant, giant uh, switchboard with all these knobs and levers. I said <laughs> lever on purpose because I thought it'd be funny. Uh, <laughs> you think he's got pictures of planes and on the side walls of his at-home studio? Maybe. I mean, maybe. All right. I'm going to imagine that he also plays the bass guitar just because bass guitar yeah. is better than regular guitar. (laughs) All right, we're going to get back into the song. See, I just like the way it builds. It's more its more literal rather than mixing. It's just like I'm playing something and then I'm going to add something on top of it and then I'm going to add some other thing on top of it and just keep going. Yeah, it's its way more straightforward than some of the other like proggy bands that we've listened to, but it's its still fun. Because like you said, he's, he's layering, but he's, he's sequentially layering. He's not really adding too many twists and turns, at least at this point in the song but I'm still liking it. I was, I was doing the leg tap. The leg tap is a good sign in the Halloran household. All right. (laughs) Great. (laughs) Good to hear. I hate you so much.
Do you know if there's a personal significance with the name Amy? I don't. Do you know anything about this guy's personal life? There's, there's really not, there's not a lot. I know he had a blog at one point. Um, we used to like look at it all together back in the day, but I haven't looked at it in a while. Um, I don't know. I don't know. There's not much about him because he doesn't do like, you know, he's not in Rolling Stone and stuff, but he's all like, even the Wikipedia page is about four sentences long. And there's like 10, there's 10 sources for his whole Wikipedia article. And it's all just nitpicking any piece of information about him that they can find in like an interview he's done in the past. All right. I just wanted to ask, Amy's going to become an imaginary person in my own brain now. We're going to go crazy. Well, that's what I want to hear. I want to hear what your brain pictures show you while you listen to this. It's still forming. The brain pictures are in a very uh, infant-like stage right now, but All right. I'll let you know. All right. Here's what I've got so far. Amy is someone that he had a very close relationship um, earlier on in his life. And I feel like currently in this song, he's going through, I don't know, we're going to call it the normal day to day. And I'm imagining the the guitars, that that, that lingering riff that's going on. That did it. Oh, man, I can't sing at all. But the guitar <laughs> that's been laying down for, I don't know, at least the last 30 seconds or so. That's like the haze that can develop over your brain when you go through the day-to-day -day monotony. And I feel like at some point in this song, there might be something that kind of signals him remembering this person from his past life. That's where Matt's brain pictures are taking him. So uh, was it a, was it a romantic relationship or was it a, pl a pl I don't know. I don't, I guess it's platonic, platonic. non-romantic. Um, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. Yeah. All right. I'm going to let the song decide that one for me, but I it's to me right now, it's a person from, from way back that it's, it's definitely a good friend and he's, he's not remembering them as much right now. Cause he's in that, that day-to-day -day grind and maybe not even an enjoyable day-to-day -day grind. All right. Cause this seems very like not daydreamy. The, the vibe that I'm getting is more, I don't know, monotony. Okay. What do you think? I agree mainly with what you're saying. Um, I mean, the, the album's called Beacons, and I know, obviously, you wouldn't know this because you didn't see the other tracks, but there's, like, another track on this album called, like, something like We're Going Down, like a plane crash, potentially. So I've always kind of thought of this as, like, in context of the rest of the album, maybe, like, a, some, some sort of disasters happened in a plane, they're going down, and this is his, like, not Requiem, but, like, sort of, like, calling out and, and just remembering Amy, maybe, like... You know, he loves her, but never got to tell her his full feelings about her. Yeah. And he's about to die. And it's just like kind of his his thought process as he knows he's about to per perhaps perish. Oh, OK, so I don't think we're that different. I think I'm just extending it out over a longer period of time, maybe. Mm -hmm. And I have the context of the rest of the album, too. So, right. All right. Let's see what happens. If I'm sticking with my story, there's kind of that more sonic sounding guitar in the background that's not doing the one, two, three, one, two, three. It's kind of ringing in the background. I'm going to imagine that that's, that's Amy. 
that's the person from his past life or that's the person he's trying to talk to as he as the plane goes down so personifying the riffs with different characters maybe that's what i'm trying that's what i'm thinking cool cool i just dig i dig people's thought processes and how they interpret the same information that others take in i just i'm fascinated by that so that's really cool well it's so funny too because i've always like so there's abstract art right there's paintings where someone like for someone that's not an artist you look at it and you're like what the hell like a third grader with some crayola could have figured that shit out but then there's individuals that look at it and they're like this is amazing this is what it signifies i've admittedly always thought abstract art was cool looking but while simultaneously thinking it's bullshit Mm -hmm. i don't feel the same way about like instrumental music i think instrumental music is amazing for the reason that anyone can take some significance out of it which is probably what art critics are probably trying to say about abstract art but i just sit there going i I, i've always thought that they think that there's like a correct way to interpret a painting in a wrong way when probably that's not the case and i'm just like i'm not in that world so i don't understand (laughs) yeah it seems like you would apply the the music the way you the way you view the music towards the art as well because like some some could have a higher meaning and some you could just think is shit and that's like why art's great right That was weird. Did you hear that like off tune note, like intentional off tune? No. Maybe there's just some distortion on my, I'm going to go back a, like yeah, 10 or 15 seconds. Yeah. When he plays a chord, he's been playing like a similar chord the entire time. And it seems like he brings down one note of the chord, the last couple seconds of this little like segment. I'm going to play it again. Oh, I hear it. Yeah, like why? I'm sure that was like intentional, and it it just that could be like a uh, like a like a thought process change. Like he's he's having a certain memory, and then it's getting too real for him, so he like moves away from it. Maybe mm-hmm. like, it, like mm-hmm. mid mid thought process, he's just like, nope, I can't handle that now. Handle not going there, something like that. And it, yeah, it's so cool because I have to imagine this person did that intentionally there's so many different variations you can make to a chord to make it sound different but not necessarily off tune like that one sticks out although you didn't hear it the first time sticks out like a sore thumb sore thumb blah thumb huh matt thumb huh (laughs) oh man i can't talk (laughs) because there's just no instance where that sounds good like it's it sounds bad it sounds out of tune but yeah, I want to know why he did that now. It's like, to me, I, when I heard it, I kind of thought of it as like the musical equivalent of like a record scratch. Like, you yeah. might be wondering how I got here. <laughs> yeah. No, it very well could be. That's a, that's a solid interpretation. for a change 
I want to change. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I feel like we've been listening to the same vibe <laughs> for probably a solid minute. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying, though, is it's not as technical and it's more just like kind of to me, I see it more as like a soundtrack. OK. As you're listening, it's just kind of like with you rather than a set. I don't know. I'm I'm I'm, I'm doing terrible with trying to explain <laughs> what's in my brain right now. Um, but yeah, no, I was I was feeling ready for a change too, and I'm sure one is coming. So, I don't like soundtrack wouldn't be a bad thing. Like some music you just want to have around rather than music that you want to be that you want to have front and center. This might have been written to be more in the background, mm-hmm. but yeah, I, I it's just a cool juxtaposition between this and like Opeth from last week. Opeth every 30 or 45 like they would have a segment that would go on for a little while but then like i don't want to say clockwork because it definitely wasn't regular but there were like very defined changes in the song where this one is very much a a blend it's like you took an opa song and then like chopped it up and then blended it and then spat it out so you we're not really seeing those defined changes and that's what I was trying to say when I was like, it's just more of like you you kind of vibe with the song rather than having a, nor- a, a, a traditional listening experience, I guess. Okay. So he did a note there, but it wasn't as intentionally off tune. It just seemed like I more of a, a power chord where he like added a note, but it wasn't it wasn't the record scratch like you said before. Mm-hmm. And then I was thinking of activities where I would listen to this song because as we were saying, it seems more like a, a soundtracky song. I I haven't been able to do the whole um picking out a meaning or doing my brain pictures because Honestly, I've been waiting for like a transition and it just hasn't happened. So where my brain is now is, hey, Matt, what would you do while listening to this song? And I feel like it would be a tremendous song to listen to while up in the clouds. Like I've brought up hiking quite a bit, but this would be a song that would make you really aware of the nature that is around you. Like, yeah, I don't know. No, I get that. I, I liked I always liked working out when I used to work out. Uh I used to like listening to this while I worked out because it was kind of like motivational a little bit with the droningness. It's just kind of like getting you in the zone, the helping you focus a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Makes you like in a weird way because you're, you're naturally not focusing as well when you listen to something, but it's almost tuning you in to the activity that you have at hand with the music somehow. Cause music shouldn't do that. Like, Technically, whenever you listen to something, you're basically taking some of your attention and putting it elsewhere. But the way, like the cadence of this song, and you're right, the droning aspect, I feel like physical activity would go well with this because you you end up, yeah, I'm doing a you. You can, you can focus. You can focus. I always get bored when I'm working out. So this helped me focus on it. Be more self-aware of each rep. Be more self-aware of like each mile. Mm-hmm. Be, yeah. I like the little bits of melody that he tried to throw in there. That was nice. 
It was a nice little yeah. change from the last few minutes. I kind of picture like there's like a crying guitar as like the background and then it's layering other riffs on top of that. Like that. I, I, I can't what do you mean by things. crying guitar? It's like the, the I, don't, I don't know how to sing it because it's like that. I, I can't. I can't sing it. I don't know. Please try um, to sing it. Please, please <laughs> try to sing it. There's like, there's like a, it's like a little bit wailing, like wow, 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 like going on in the background. Mm -hmm. And to me, that kind of shows the anguish maybe that's happening okay. while he's having all these other thoughts on top of it. And that I think is part of the genius of what he's doing with the theme of this album. And again, maybe, maybe if you listen to the whole album, you might have different thoughts, but that to me doubles down on the, he's thinking about Amy. It's not going well. He's not in a good position right now. Mm -hmm. He might be on his deathbed plummeting out of the sky and he just wishes he could talk to Amy. And there's just a lot of complicated uh, feelings going on in his head. Okay. So where, where do you think that that little insert of melody in the last 30 seconds comes in? Like, what do you think the purpose of that was? Were those just positive thoughts about Amy? Like, what do you think that was? I don't, I, I think the whole song is just a lot of complex feelings going on. Okay. They're not always, they're not always in sync with each other. They're, they're potentially um, opposite feelings that are mashing up against each other. Okay. Um, a lot of ambivalence going on, maybe just a lot of complicated things. If I'm going with your thought process, this is the plane spiraling because I don't hear a lot of hope in this section. This section is bad, bad, bad. Yeah, this is the last track on the album, too. So this is like the finale. Oh, OK. OK. Yeah, that, that brings a little bit more um, meaning to what we've been talking about, too, I feel like. And initially, we wanted to have this podcast be like listening to a whole ass album, but we realized it would be like a five hour episode each time. So, yeah, um, you came to me with that. You were like, we could just uh, put on the A side and just let it roll. And I'm like, Zach, no one wants to listen <laughs> to something for that long. I'm not even sure that my ADD <laughs> could get me through something that long. <laughs> but there is a beauty to that. That like, that's why I like vinyl. Like you put on an album. You listen to the thing start to finish. Mm -hmm. In many of the Genesis albums that I like, they do a like a, a riff in song one that comes back in song eight or nine on the B side of the album. And it's like when you listen to it like that, you you kind of forgot that you went from track to track. Right. And you're able to tell a story through all of them. So you, you kind of lose a little bit of that playing song by song. But obviously we have constraints but that's what that's what you're here for you're here to tell me that there's other songs on this album that kind of use that same theme you're here to tell me that there's a plane going down you're, you're doing right, a wonderful right. job i'm going to read you all the track titles there's 10 tracks amy i love you is the last track okay this is going to put it i should i should have done this at the beginning you're a son probably. of a bitch you're but just useless here here's the track listing so track one is we are going to invert okay track two here, wait a minute. Damn it. <laughs> Three. We're going in. We're going down. Oh, no. When's the... <laughs> Four. When's the Fallout Boy interlude? Four is, oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. Five is, I'll admit it now, I was scared. Six. We, we were all scared. Seven. Push it way up. Eight. It's just wide open field. Nine, it's bad. We're hit, man. We are hit. Ten, Amy, I love you. Zach, you asshole. 
you you kind of threw out your interpretation and i know you said there were other songs and there were song titles and i would blah 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 but you kind of <laughs> threw out your interpretation it's like well here's what i think while i'm going into this whole like <laughs> life arc story for this guy <laughs> meanwhile you know that the song titles tell a very very direct story <laughs> i'm so yeah, that's angry my right now i should have done that at the beginning those of you that are listening i want you to just I want you to absorb that and then you can rewind to the section of this song where Matt tried to sound all smart and say what he thought was happening while Zach sat (laughs) there like a schmuck and just had all this knowledge and didn't tell me any of it. Oh, so angry. Well, part of this, part of this point of this podcast too, is to show each other stuff and see what your interpretation is. And that's why I brought up too. I like seeing how other people interpret the same information. Even though you didn't have all the information, you had the information of the song, and it's cool to hear what you think about it. Yeah. With no, with no preconceptions. Yeah. I, I didn't make that big of a leap. Like, the song's called Amy, I Love You. Obviously, you know he's thinking about a person, but mm-hmm. you'd have to be insane to listen to the song and think it was, like, a love song. Like, this is definitely a right. song where he's, he's struggling. Like, he is struggling right. a lot. Damn, just reading those track titles without even the music, it tells the whole story. <laughs> 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 so for those of you that lost track of the story here the plane is crashing that's what's happening right now <laughs> as we speak I'm still upset that you held out on those song titles. And then now I'm thinking, now I'm thinking that it would have been even more funny if like I went through all of that and you read back the song titles and really like the entire album was about like a lonely bunny or something. You'd be like, well, actually you weren't even close. (laughs) That would have been good. All right. (laughs) Back to the song. Are we about to have 30 seconds of ringing out? Is that about to happen? No, it ends It ends at like 728. The file's just long for some reason. Oh, okay. So we're done. That's oh, good. It's over. We're done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I enjoyed the song. <laughs> I wanted to be like, oh God, I don't have to listen to this anymore. <laughs> but we have listened. What was the song that we listened to that did the like 25 second drag out? Was that a Winter Sun song? Probably. Probably. So this album Beacons came out in September of 2010. So this is a 10 year album already. That's crazy. Damn. That's crazy. I don't like what? What were you doing? What were you doing 10 years ago, Zach? I was living in Geneva and we had a house and it was called Super House and it was awesome. This was like post college house? Yeah, like we moved. I, I, I graduated college. I lived at home for a little bit till I could get a job because I graduated in 2009, which was like the recession. (laughs) And then uh, when I was able to move out, I moved out I moved with a buddy for like six months. And then I moved into a Craigslist house with my other friend, uh, Paul. We just like met the guys a couple of times to see if we were like compatible. And it turned out we just had like all the same type, same taste in music and movies and all sorts of stuff. And it was like instant bro ship. (laughs) Did we just become best friends? Yup. And it was only $200 a month for my room. No way. That's unreal. With no lease. My paychecks were $600. So it was very important that it was that price. (laughs) 
every two weeks, every one week? Like when were you making 600 bucks? Every two weeks, I got a check for $660. Holy Christ. That is yeah. yikes. Yeah. Yeah. So I really needed that apartment. It was dope. It was a whole house. It was five rooms. If we had, if we had gotten a fifth roommate, it would have been 160 a month. It was crazy. Cause like the one guy, Dave, his like boss or friend, someone he worked with, um, it was her house. And I guess she was like living with her boyfriend, but didn't want to sell her house. So she just rented it to us for $800 a month, which I think is probably just what the, what the mortgage was. So like, we just lived there and lived in the house. And then like when she was going to move back in, she gave us like three months heads up and we found another house to move out. It was great. No lease, no nothing. I just paid, paid Dave every month and everything was set. Was it kept up well? Like, yeah, yeah, it was it... good. It was a good place to live. Very nice. It was just a steal is all it was is because of the situation. Lucky you. Lucky you. Oh yeah. It was great. 10 years ago, I was going back to school. I was getting my second bachelor's degree. I think I was just graduating Brockport with my second degree in biological sciences in my teaching. Cert. Oh no, I was just starting at Brockport. That's what was happening. Yes, yes, yes. I see. And, and I then see. I would be there for two years and then I would graduate. Yeah. And then I would start teaching. So that was like a very in-between time in my life in 2010. Wasn't really yeah. sure what the hell was happening for Mr. Matt. Was that when you were, were you a security guard at that point? At the hospital? Yeah, I was a security guard at the hospital. Yep. I worked down in Penyan and lived in Geneva. Um, it started out as weekends only, but then I got the, I moved to a night shift Sunday through Thursday, which is actually pretty dope when you're young and single. It was actually great because I'd go to bed when my friends went to work and then I'd go to work when my friends went to bed. So we were still like on the same schedule for partying. Very nice. Because on the weekends, you know, we, I could get out Thursday night and I could meet up people for drinks, not have to do anything on Friday or Saturday. And I wouldn't have to go. So I'd get out of work Thursday night and I could just party until I had to go to work on Sunday night. That's pretty amazing. So I got, I got a half a Thursday. I got all of Friday night, all of Saturday night with no, you know, sort of hindrances. And then I just, I was back on a normal work schedule as everyone else. Basically it was kind of dope. I can imagine. Well, I didn't make any money at all. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't spend it. Well, you probably spent it partying, but yeah, you weren't it spending beer. it on living. <laughs> like <Right. laughs> 200 bucks a month where you were living is pretty damn cheap. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty dope. We could walk everywhere. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Upstate New York is delightful, guys. Geneva, really Penyan, all interesting areas of upstate New York where Zach and I come from. All right. So do you want my do you want my feelings about song one? No, I think we should just wrap it up. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Give me give me thoughts. Uh, the, it's not terribly great thoughts. I'm not going to lie. That's it would be good. a good ambient song. It would be a good go for like a hike song. I like it in context of the other song. So like I feel like I'm doing this song a disservice, especially with what you just said. Like this sounds like an instrumental concept album mm -hmm. where listening to one song without the rest of the others probably isn't the greatest, but based on itself, uh, we've listened to a lot more songs that I enjoy, but it was, it was still fun. Like I just, I kept waiting for it to kick into another gear and mm -hmm. that's probably just my own personal preferences kicking in but right and that's why i try to give the disclaimer at the beginning that if this is more of like a droney vibing situation rep more than what we're used to listening to yeah and that it is what it is you can prep me with it and i'm still like oh yeah it's yeah. like it's about yeah. to make that turn and it <laughs> never made the turn right <laughs> so the second song I was I was listening to Spotify to try to pick out which Cloud Kicker songs I wanted to do. And again, it was hard because a lot of the stuff is conceptualized. Um, but this track just came up and I apparently missed a whole 2019 album from him. Um, but this track kind of caught my ear. So I thought it would be a good one to bring. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's X-A-O-C. It's like it, apparently in Cyrillic letters, it, it like in uh, in russian it might mean chaos or something the the rest of the track listings on the album are night this Jacques or chaos or whatever uh blackwing arlp 36 yhwh 
wall and void. So like, this is probably abstract. Hold so, on. Yeah, I don't know what any of that hold means. On. He does a lot of weird <laughs> stuff with with his track titles. No, I wasn't <laughs> even saying hold on. I wasn't sure what one song title ended and another one like right. began. So, so night is the first one. This Jacques, Jacques or Kayak or whatever is track number two. That's the one we're going to listen to. Frere Jacques, number two. Got right. it. Three number is three. Blackwing. Four okay. is AR-LP36. Five is all caps YHWH. Six is wall and seven is void. Okay. So. All right. This is a little less straightforward. Yeah. And I haven't even listened to this whole album. I just heard this song as I was trying to listen to the old stuff and this just popped up and I didn't even know there was an album in 2019 and it was really cool and I dug the song. So love it. We're going to get like a a pretty raw reaction to this one. Nice. Yeah. I've only probably heard it once or twice. And I have never heard this song. I've, I've, I've literally heard of this artist just from you mentioning like that show in Philly before when we've talked and stuff like that, but this is brand new for me too. So Nice, nice, nice. All right, so let's let's get started. You're gonna dig the album artwork too, I think. All right, let's do this. Let's listen to song numero dos. It was X A O C by Cloud Kicker. love that beginning that might have been a, a down-tuned guitar or the bass guitar that i imagine he plays but that was a fun little rhythm section beginning for the first 15 mm-hmm. seconds i liked that I've just always been impressed with with Ben Sharp because he does this as a hobby and like doesn't even care if he makes money from it. And that's just so it's just he's so he's so fucking talented. You know how talented you got to be to be a pilot in the first place. And then like also you just like had this wonderful musical mind. That's just really cool. Well, like that's yeah, crazy amazing because a lot of people would say or at least people that researched brain science like back in the day they would say that if you're that pilot kind of brain you shouldn't necessarily also have a very developed artistic side of your brain and I guess we're starting to mash those two things together with like the musical world now I think we've referenced like math rock before and things like that but right he like you can almost hear the analytical side of his brain in his riffs like they don't necessarily blend like everything blends together, but you very much hear the, uh, what am I trying to say? I almost just want to sing it out, but like he'll do a chord. He, he, it's very logical, the progression of sounds Mm -hmm. in his songs, or at least I hear, I hear logic and it's not a bad thing. It, It very, it makes very much sense that he's a, he's a pilot. Yeah. And maybe that's why this, he his music is so much different than other stuff too not even like from like a oh it's so different like not like an edgy way but like right just objectively different from a lot of other musicians because of maybe the way his brain works i mean he clearly has a very unique style with the with the uh the way he layers the droning aspects and everything um and uh yeah all right i'm gonna hit play (laughs)
Oh, yeah. Just give me a lot of that. I enjoy that quite a bit. Is this what you were missing from the first song? Yes, that's <laughs> what I was missing. It just, like, I can handle the drone. Like, I almost enjoy the drone, but I, I need to be jolted out of it. When we've brought it up in other songs, it's like, all right, did that go on too long? And when I'm normally saying that, we're talking about a 30 to 45 second, like, did it go on too long? Mm-hmm. This, yeah, I, I'm waiting for that. And it doesn't mean it's wrong what he did before, but obviously I have a preference and this is the preference. You can start me off slow, but then you need to bring me to something like this, which is lovely. And then that even makes you okay with this, that ringing note at the end. Yeah, I'm just objectively right. This is how you're supposed to write a song. Like, (laughs) those other opinions are just wrong. symbols the symbol rhythm with the riff of two different rhythms was really cool to me yeah those rhythms are complex i <laughs> i have a very like informal way of assessing whether or not a uh, rhythm is complex basically if i'm sitting in the car or i'm listening now if i can like predict where you're going with the rhythm before you go there like if my fingers already know like the pattern of those notes I'm going to call it not necessarily complex. And he's got something going on in the background where I was like, I was predicting, I was predicting. And then he waited like a half of a beat longer and I was thrown off and then I couldn't pick it up back again. And then you're right. The symbols are adding a complexity to it. I'm liking this little part. We've got some intricacies going on. Should have brought this song first. (laughs) That's all right. This one has a a pretty, um, I'm not going to say typical, because what we listen to isn't typical, but based on the other artists that we've brought to this podcast and the other artists that we like, this one is more familiar in song structure than that first song. The transitions are happening all over the place. I should, I think looking back, I should have picked a different song because that was the, that was like the conclusion to a concept album and probably needed the, 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 the other aspects. Is there, the problem is there's so many songs like there's so many songs I wanted to show you. Yeah. And I was just it's like, so hard. which ones? This one's really good, but maybe it's only really good if you experience the whole album first. So I don't know. But either way, this one's good. That's the beauty. That's the beauty and the difficulty in it. Like it's it's it maybe even that first song is making me appreciate the second song more. I don't know. You can only do so much when you're trying to have someone listen to something uh, short of just being like, hey, could you just uh, listen to their entire discography when you have a second? Just go for it. Right. Can you take three days and just listen to every single song? Right. So don't (laughs) beat yourself up over it. Let's just we're I'm enjoying where this one's going. I love the first one. What'd you say? I said I love the first one. (laughs) Yeah, well, no one cares what you think, Zach. So all right. (laughs) Just kidding. I love you. I'm sorry. Okay.
feel like this song would have been a sick song to listen to live. Yeah. With the ambience and the lights and the fog and the dark room. Mm -hmm. And you can just sit there with your eyes closed and just let it kind of happen, which is what I'm doing now. But the vibe of being there live. Oh, I said vibe again. God damn it. We should have like a vibe counter. No. Can we get like a. Would you call it a vibe check? (laughs) (laughs) Seriously, I want a little like sound effect button in the corner of my computer. I can just be like, ching. Or like, like super annoying. It interrupts the whole thing. Um, We'll see if I can figure out something for next week. I definitely want that to happen. The sad part of what you're saying is that he doesn't tour. But you said he did a tour. He did the one tour in 2014. And that's the only one he's ever done, to my knowledge. That's why I had to go. So that was in 2014 in Philadelphia? I thought yeah. it was more recent. No, it was 2014. His first, his MySpace songs were coming out in 2008, because that's how long he's been making music. And oh wow, he, has, he put out a, a, uh, an album this year. So he's still been making music throughout the whole thing. He's got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven ish albums because some are remasters, some are ones the live tour, and then he's got a couple of EPs uh, or uh-huh. one, two, three, four, five, six, six EPs. So I'm looking at Wikipedia now so I can answer your LP AP, EP question. <laughs> so. This one came. This is an uh, this is an LP from 2019, unending. Okay, but yeah, I'll probably never see this song live. So he he didn't release any of this analog at all. Like he, there's no there's no CD of this. There's no record of this. It's just all digital. I think you can order. I think he does limited limited uh, CDs and limited vinyl um, when he when he first releases it. Uh-huh. Uh, but a lot of it is just the, the band camp is the main spot he did it. I mean, literally, he just put it out on MySpace in 2008 was his first like sort of compilation of stuff he'd been working on. And then it just kind of sprawled from there. And again, he was just giving it away. He was just posting it online for free because he's just this is his hobby. It's not his job. He's not seeking an income from it. He just wanted to do it. So I know that uh, I think Fade in 2012 I think he did vinyl, and that's what I think that might have been what Dave got vinyl of, um, but I can't remember what it was because it was forever ago already, and it seems like it was yesterday. What got you into this guy? So that's a question I should have asked in the beginning that just popped into me. So my friend Dave, my friend Dave, the the guy who I moved in with at Super House, uh-huh. showed me showed me him showed me the music, and I was like, "This is amazing! It's very like different than a lot of other stuff." I just dig the way it makes me feel when I listen to the songs. All right. Do you think it was the difference between what you had been listening to in 2010 or by 2010, had you already kind of made the transition to what you and I basically listen to like now? Um, I don't know. I know in college, I liked some prog stuff, uh, a lot of post rock type stuff like rock, like Russian circles. And that was like one of the bands actually, because he was, Dave was in a band. You know, how I talk about Lee Stragonia, the band I used to manage. Yes. Yes. That's he was the drummer in that band. So like when I moved in, I was basically when we hung out the couple of times before I moved in, I was just like, yeah, what kind of music you like? And they're like, oh yeah, we're actually in a band. I'm like, oh, cool. They're like, yeah, we're instrumental metal. And I was like, no shit. You guys like, <laughs> you guys like Russian circles and stuff. He's like, oh yeah, we love that shit. And uh, it just kind of spawned out of that. So like, that house brought me a lot of music i probably would have never come to know and friends that i could never say goodbye to and uh the uh i don't know it was a really fun time in my life and there was a lot of good music going on nice 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 all right cool well we'll get back to listening to the song i felt like it we would have been remiss to not talk about like what got you originally into cloud kicker yeah, it was it's a fun fun trip down memory lane.
Loved that little bit of drum. Needed a few blast beats. Wouldn't know what we were listening to without a few blast beats in the background. <laughs> that was nice. And now it sounds like we're going into a little bit of a, a gent or degent section. What's the correct way to say that? It's gent, like gentleman. All right. Yeah. But that's do you know where that of... came from? Why do they call it gent? Uh, Mashuga started it, basically. Mashuga just kind of invented that sound in Prague. Okay. And then everybody just kind of started copying it and making it their own thing. Um, that's actually a lot of the early stuff was kind of genty, and that's like, very 2010 to 12 of like a lot of the music they were showing me was that gent stuff. A lot of the early cloud kicker was that. Yeah. Yeah. Cloud kicker was very genty. And then I guess I wasn't asking where the, the style came from, although I don't think I knew it came from a sugar. I was talking about the word. Do you have any idea what that word means? I think it's just like the sound, from? like the sound of the sound it makes like, uh, what is that? Oh, okay. Gent, gent, gent. What is that? Like onomatopoeia? Is that what it is? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's just onomatopoeia. Alrighty then. I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, what do you think is happening right now in this song? <laughs> well, considering that the name I think means chaos, I think it's a little bit of controlled chaos. You son of a bitch. All right. Hey. That was such an easy answer for you. I wanted yeah. to put you on your toes. <laughs> what do you think is happening in the song? I have no idea, but I guess that goes back to the chaos. I've literally been sitting here staring at the album artwork for what seems like forever kind of getting lost in it's it while like you listen in, yes entrancing yeah. dude like completely entrancing like i feel like i'm taking an inkblot test with myself <laughs> for you guys that aren't lo necessarily looking at this album artwork you need to find it we'll probably link it in our, our podcast and our youtube video the album is cloud kicker unending so if you, you could probably google it as well but it just looks crazy town absolutely crazy town and i've brought up my vinyl obsession lately but like this would just be a cool one to have in your collection because it looks pretty mm -hmm. and i would imagine that if he released it on a vinyl pressing he would do like a limited edition like color vinyl that would just be fun to watch spin i don't know like when we're done tonight i'm honestly gonna pull up his website and see if he is doing pressings because you can straight up message him too like he'll respond to you probably eventually even that first song, I, I didn't mean to, I, I probably, it probably felt like I was shitting on it. Cause I, I, I did enjoy the song, but I think what we determined was it just like, it seems out of place, not with the other songs in that, um, that EP or LP, whatever it was. And then listening to this one, I just enjoyed it so much. And then the album artwork and I'm like, shit, even with that other one, this guy is definitely someone that you need to listen to an extended play of and not Every artist will tell you like, oh, you should listen to the album from start to finish. And that's great. I try to do that with every artist that I'm like really into, but especially with instrumental music and then instrumental music that wants to try to tell a story from start to finish. 
it's almost like a need to do kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And the more and more I get into this medium of listening to music, I don't know what does it because you can just play it on a computer on a long play and just have it happen. But there, there's something about setting that and listening to it over a certain period of time that just gives you different feelings with that music. That This one would just be awesome. And like I said, the, the, it would just look cool because this artwork is just really, really, really cool. I wonder who does it, if he just has a friend do it, yeah, if this is also something he does in his spare time. Because if he does, then he's the world's most talented person like i don't even <laughs> right right yeah i don't know i don't know he's just a really cool dude he was very humble when i met him and he's super talented and i just like him well i like him too zach i like him too <laughs> that's good <laughs> How long does the ear torture go on for? I don't know. Probably probably rings out for the next 40 seconds. All right, we should let it ring out. Or shouldn't we? Or should we? You, you can lower it in the mix if it's if it's if it's terrible. All right, we'll give it a shot. There's still guitar back there. Yeah. It's like a phoenix rising from the ashes. <laughs> I assume that feeds into the next song and that the next track on the album. I would assume that as well. So what are your thoughts? My thoughts were, were that song fell in line with more of what I'm comfortable listening to. That song had more elements of what I like. That song was interesting. That song was entrancing. And I'm not sure, honestly, if it was like, what I was staring at that was making me entranced because the other one had like, it was nice artwork, but this one was literally like I was going through what I explained earlier in the podcast. Like it was almost like I was trying to determine the meaning of a piece of concept uh, visual artwork while listening to or abstract visual artwork while listening to abstract music. I don't know. It was a, it was a very intense sensory kind of experience i i enjoyed it quite a bit that's great i'm glad to hear that yeah, yeah yeah that's uh i don't know i just i always whenever i listen to cloud kicker i always need to make sure that i'm going to listen to a lot of cloud kicker because <laughs> it's like it needs to be a big chunk it can't just be on a playlist i i can feel that there's definitely artists yeah there's definitely artists that i listen to that that needs to happen. Like there's a guy named Pliny that I might play soon that is, is in a similar boat to, to this dude that I think where he does things a little bit more independent and has similar kind of style in his music. And I need to be in the right mindset to listen to it. And it's not something that I want to listen to in a mix with other stuff. Right. I want to just listen to that in that moment for quite a while and just let it, let it kind of ring out in my head for a little while. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. And Pl is it Pliny or Pliny? I, I, he comes up, that comes up in uh in like cloud kicker algorithms all the time. 
I say Pliny, but it might be Pliny. He's a lot of fun. Like if it's not the next time I play music, it will be within the la- next like three or four, at least like he's someone that I definitely want to play. Cause he's just yeah. fun to listen to. And I similar, similar musicality with the cloud kicker stuff. I think cloud kicker is a little bit longer and his um, song lengths and he's a little bit more ambient sounding. Mm-hmm. Whereas um, Pliny is a little bit more technical, a little bit shorter with the songs. He's trying to tell a story, I think in a little bit more of a concise format, but uh, similar artists. Both got their start um, just on like a digital music music sharing service. Both aren't making a ton of money from their music, at least from what I can tell, but are incredibly talented. Yeah, man. Clutter's dope. So, yeah. And it's a dope band name. And uh, yeah, I think he took it from a uh, cloud kicker from like uh, the rescuers. What are the rescuers? I don't know who the rescuers are. You remember the rescuers and the rescuers down under? It's like the, the mice. And like, do you remember... Um, I think Tailspin, the show, the TV show, was like a spinoff from the movies. I could be making that up, though. Oh, I think I remember Tailspin, but I I have no idea what those other things you're bringing up. I think I think Blue, the the bear Blue the bear from like uh, it's like the same artwork as Blue the bear from uh, from Jungle Book or whatever because like it all was the same. Uh, they like reused a lot, of, but I think the pilot's name was Cloud was Kick Cloud Kicker. Okay. Okay. Maybe I'm making all that up. Let me see here. Cloud kicker. <laughs> Ducktails. No, hold on. Oh, hold on. Ducktails. That was no, a great okay, show. Okay, so he was on Tailspin. Cloud kicker. Disney Wiki. Disney Wiki for Cloud Kick. Cloud kicker is the deuteragonist from the Disney animated series Tailspin. Kit is a young twelve-year-old orphan bear cub, full of spirit and spunk, and is Baloo's best friend, partner, and navigator. He's the little bear from Tailspin, the sidekick. Okay. And Baloo is the bear from the Jungle Book that they just gave a plane for some reason. (laughs) Oh, it's the same character? Yeah, his name's Baloo. I didn't know Baloo. His name's Baloo, and it's the same artwork as Baloo from the Jungle Book. That's what always, like, threw me. I I don't remember any of that shit. I assume it's the same character, and they just were like, hey, now, instead of being, like, a Rudyard Kipling book or whatever. You're a fucking <laughs> bear that flies a plane. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't have enough time to come up with new intellectual property, guys. We're just gonna reuse right. some shit. Oh, nah, too anyway, good. Too that was good. a good episode, I think. I kind of like that our uh, the differing opinions. I feel like hopefully makes for a good listening experience. Or maybe it's shit. Like the differing opinions between us yeah. or the differing opinions yeah. between like what we're listening to. Oh, okay. Instead of us just yes manning each other the whole time, it was nice to have a little uh, differing opinion. It's always good. That's how the world works these days, Zach. People disagree. Almost just to do it for fun. I disagree with that assessment. <laughs> Whereas I feel like we do it in a more genuine sense and then try to find where we agree. But yeah, like I... I really think that I would have thoroughly enjoyed listening to that other one from start to finish. it, the start to finish mother fuck. <laughs> I hate when I can't talk. And then um, I'm definitely going to try to find out if there's a vinyl pressing of that most recent one, almost exclusively for that album artwork, but also because the song was kick ass. Yeah, it'll be good. All right, man. So as we're wrapping up, what are they supposed to do? These listeners well, you know, a vaccine's on the way, but that doesn't mean act like an idiot. So wear a mask, wash your hands, keep your third eye open, and don't be a dick. <laughs> yes, don't be a dick. Adios, my friends. Bye.